All right, camera's focusing. I guess it wasn't broken. All right, good news. All right, you guys, I might have found a spot for old Rusty here, so I'm gonna finish working on those brake lights and get power going to where it needs to go. Okay, so last time I was in here, we found out that the brake switch is good. Got three different switches in it. Thanks to some commenters, you kind of help clarify. One of these is to cancel the cruise control. The other goes to the transmission uh, for some reason. And then, of course, the brake lights. So we applied power to this wire and I turned the brake lights on. So, since these are all separate switches, I can only assume that this is supposed to have positive coming in through it. But it does not, so I can just real quick maybe supply power to that and see if we can get our seatbelt warning beep to come on. Uh, we found out last time as well that uh, we could get that to come on by sending power into the brake, uh, the brake wire through this thing by manually doing that. We did that, I held the brake, completing the circuit through the switch, putting power to that orange wire where it's supposed to be, and it kind of made uh, the beep work and. I think wherever this orange wire is going, it's going to be where the problem is. Wherever we're not, we don't have a connection. Okay, key on. No seatbelt warning beep. Let's try putting power to this. Yep. There's our seatbelt warning beep. It also beeps if you uh, have the keys off. The light's on. That's not working either. Huh. Okay, I got a... Just got some uh, screws here. What is that? Three eighths. So it's maybe a five sixteenths. It's a quarter inch. Got the uh, trailer brake system removed and I'm just going to work on getting this panel opened up. Maybe take out the ashtray and get a better window into what I'm looking for. 9.30 seconds seems to kind of work. A little loose, but stuff off here. So we got found another two wires that look like they got melted together. So we'll split these apart. See if there's uh, see if the insulation is compromised at all. See if that's a short or not. The yellow, a green, and a white—they're all stuck. 
I'm gonna think I'm gonna start taking off all this electrical tape and I think I just need to visually inspect all the wiring. Bare copper right there. Shorting to the green. That's one problem. Yeah, cable tracer isn't really working on this because this wire is finding a path to ground. So everything's kind of putting off a signal, so that didn't really work out too well. Doing this cable chasing the hard way, just peeling back the insulation by slipping the blade along here, and just kind of peeling it out as I go. Just want to figure out where this is going. I got uh, two different directions right here that it's, it's either going up. I'm going this way, so I'm gonna peel this back a little more. Okay, wire's running up. It looks like it's going now. Okay, so that wire is running off in this direction. And behind this distribution panel. Got some relays. Signal flasher. Uh, let's pull this out of here and start checking the power on this thing. Okay, it's probably this thing. Everything's good. Normally closed, normally open. A little, nice little diagram right there. <sighs> That's good. Next. Okay, another one. I can only check normally closed position unless I can power this and grab a multi me actually this has a continuity test function for whatever reason it was actually a little handy earlier figuring out that I had a pathway to ground which keeps a uh, Keeps it from working too good. So anyway, A and E. So E is the common. A is switched. Just check uh, normally. Closed position. That's got a green. Can't really see it. And then switched. Rather normally open. Let's close it. Yep. Okay, that's good. Let's make sure we're getting power where we're supposed to be getting power. Yep. That is not the issue. Electrical grease or something type of thing, maybe. It's in every one of these ports or connections. So let's pull that block out. There's just did a couple more quarter inch nuts. I could finish tracing that orange wire. 
I don't know, is that some type of electrical grease or is that all? Melted stuff. I mean, look at some big old chunks. It feels kind of greasy. Okay, got this thing disconnected. What do you even call this thing? A firewall connection? Firewall plug? Feels like I'm moving a... Pulling out a vital organ. All these wires. Just want to spin this around. Let's see what's going on back here. That orange wire looks like it's running right out the firewall. What is this freaking duct tape? What the heck? It's following this orange wire. It came uh, to this spot with three others. I got three orange wires going into this mess and th two going out. This is freaking disgusting. This is duct tape. Why is there duct tape in a wiring harness? Yeesh. What a mess. Ooh, gooey stuff, boy. Okay, looks like those are all just connected together. So, wow, okay, so one orange, two orange, three orange. These must be all just positive wires. Okay, got all that tape off of there. All opened up. Got those three orange wires. Running into the two, and those two, running back, there's one, push some slack out so I can see what it's doing. Okay, so one of the orange wires is running out of the firewall and I can see it wiggling when I move it so I want to mark it and the other is running to the other side here that's one okay, so that's two pull some slack out so I can see it when I flip it around And that's going into that box that I was curious about. Let's see what that black box is. Oh, it's got a little speaker hole in it. That must be the beeper. And that's it's supposed to go to positive in that orange splicing. Or the spice with all the orange wires is sending out positive to where it needs to be, like brake lights, the beeper thingy, which might just do more than beep. Let's pull it out of there and see. Work. It looks like it just has some Actually, yeah, there's a bunch of connections in that. I don't know what the heck that is. Made in Canada. Y'all are saying the engine was made in New York? Well, if that's the case, then the rest of the truck was made in Canada. From what I understand, it was a kind of... You know, Chevy obviously makes their stuff in USA, but... From what I heard, the, the engine was made in Canada. But some of you are saying that is in New York. Who knows? A lot of the stuff is stamped made in Canada. There's a lot of metric in here, unlike other Chevys, so I don't think it's... Anyway. This is all sealed with, uh... I mean, there's no... Actually, does that pop open? Either way, I don't think there's anything wrong with this. I think I just need to get power back to the circuit, so let's keep tracing, uh... 
Let's put this plug back in so I can find out which wire is going out and find out why that doesn't get power. Alright, got the plug put back in. That is the orange wire coming out. So let's uh, let's find the other side of that plug and trace it. First I'm going to disconnect the battery and clean out a lot of this black gunk. Alright, that was a freaking nightmare trying to get all this black stuff off and figure out which wire is what. But Second row down, fourth connection over has got to be that other orange wire. The orange wire is running into this black box which runs into the ABS module or whatever this is called. I assume that's an ABS system. Yeah, I mean, as far as I could tell, everything looks okay. If I put power, bypass power to it, it seems to work. Whatever the heck this thing does, anyway. I don't know what this is. Got some circuitry. It's probably all, you know, because there's a. You turn it on, and then there's a delay, so it's probably a timer. A couple transistors, capacitors, lots of resistors. Diode, diode, diode. More capacitors. Yeah, really? Yeah, I don't know. Nothing looks too crazy. I think I might just bypass the power. I actually. Well, I think I need to pull it. So, everything on this side of these wires all goes to something. One going to that beep module, and then one going to the anti-braking system. This one goes off to my brake lights, or my brake pedal switch. And we got two more heading up here. One feels a bit thicker than the other one, so maybe... One of these is supposed to be going to a fuse, though these are all checking out. Hmm, maybe it's there's some damage on the back of this. I'd probably have to pull this out. Oh, that's easy. Just a little clippy down there. A couple clippies up top. Or does this just kind of fall out? Oh, wow. That's pretty cool. Nice. Now you can see what's going on back here. Because I'll bet you one of those orange wires is coming up to a fuse. I don't know why there's two. Something else. All right, there's the wire running right into a fuse. So we found the fuse for the circuit. That's I gotta trace the other side of that fuse. All right, so it is that fuse on the very bottom. Right here, the 25 amp, which says stop, is getting positive on both sides of that fuse up front. But on the back, we go to that orange wire that I've been following. We are getting ground. Right there, in the fuse block, something is messing up. Awesome news, so we found the problem. That's the circuit, power getting to it, all the way up and over, but somewhere it is just not getting to the back side of that. And there's the ground, and there's positive. We put power to that. Doesn't do anything. But if we do it on the back side, huh. 
Huh, nothing. I'm like, why isn't it working? Okay, now we can test. Yep. It's like there's a short right there at the back of that fuse connection. Because the positive wire is working, right? Pull the spade connection off of that. All right, there's the other side of that fuse. Got it yanked out of there, and boy, I just there's nothing wrong with it that I can tell. This is a sh it doesn't even look like it got all that hot, so I don't know. It says it's the craziest thing. It's like power was getting right to the fuse. Pretty sure I tried that. That was the replacement fuse I was trying, I think. But yeah, basically acting like I had a blown fuse, but we got a. I don't know, something. Something happened. Fuse works. I just let's try that again. It's just not adding up. Oh my god! The whole thing endeavor was just the for corrosion. Oh my god! Oh my god! The whole thing with the the battery charger frying the wires kind of made me think there was something wrong, but there wasn't. There was just a little corrosion on the fuse. Oh my god! What a pain in the. <sighs> well, I got to learn some things. I guess I know my truck's electrical system's a little better. God. Where that goes is right there. Start cleaning up the rest of these. Maybe I get that equalizer to work. Yeah. Well, note to self. Check fuses and check fuse connections. Let's check those brake lights. Hmm, we need to put that brake light switch back in. Uh, yeah, All right, get everything put back together. Got the little spot taped up with the, where all the orange wires were connecting to. Right there. Things are a little more colorful under this dash now without all the wire loom. But that's okay. I worked on a lot of cars, but I've never seen corroded fuses. That was a new one. But we're looking good, all put back together. Hey, and 
our uh, headlight warning isn't working again. All right, easy fix, kinda. A lot of work just to find out it was a bad fuse connection, but that was a definitely a new one for me. So, anyway, thank you for watching. We got a lot more coming up. Uh, tailgate, getting the radio working. Uh, I got a list: brakes, brake pads, sway bar bushings. Need to change out that brake fluid. Probably gonna do that real quick. Well, stay tuned. Lots coming up. Thanks for watching. Bye. Also switched out uh, two of these that were had the wrong size in there. Three of these that had the wrong sizes in there. Okay, while well, I'm in here, I thought I'd move the belt over. Somebody had mentioned uh, that the serpentine shouldn't go on the uh, spline side of the belt. You can see it kind of made some marks on that pulley. And I agree to some extent. I think uh, serpentine pulleys have the splines cut into them are the ones that would be going on the interior of the belt. This makes a little more sense going like that. Um, for the pulley anyway, but for the rest of it, it just, I mean, it's still tight. It's still pretty tight, but, you know, I just, it didn't seem right. And it's really close to this hose clamp. Yeah, it's just really close to that hose clamp, though I do see a rub mark on it, so maybe that is how it used to go. Just, I'm pretty sure the diagram on the internet said to put it on the other side. Uh, it's, it's, uh... Yeah, on this side I'd say that's like half a millimeter with thin touching of that clamp. So, I don't know, I guess that works. I just sure does seem incredibly pointless to have a pulley right there. It's barely pushing on it. I don't know. We'll try that. 